हरे कृष्ण महाराज हम लोग बेस्ट आंसर जावेदकर महाराज नाइस टू सी यस महाराज प्लीज वी कैन स्टार्ट महाराज सो आई वाज गोइंग टू स्पीक ऑन लॉर्ड चैतन्य इज दैट ओके Hello you all. So I'll speak on uh, Lord Chaitanya. Om gyan timirandasya gena jina salakaya chaksu unmilita mena tasmay shri gurave namaha. Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvishishna Sunyavari Pastyatyare Satarine Panchakalpa Trubhischa Upasindu Bevacha Patitanam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnave Vyo Namaha Namaha अजानुलंबितुजोकनकामतातोसंकीर्तनैपुपितरोकमलायतक्सुविश्वंबरोद्विजवरोयुगदार्मुपालोवंदेच्छेदात्पुर्याकरोतुरुनाएवतारोवं
he uh, narrates a little interesting pastime. Of course, Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are eternal, but for the sake of understanding, we describe things in terms of time. We can't describe things in terms of eternal because we're not, we're na not able to think in terms of eternality. Just like, for example, when we say, well, there was Krishna and Krishna expanded into Balaram and Balaram expanded into Lord Narayan and Chaturvyuha, like that, and then expansions go on. So when you hear that, you think in terms of something coming about. But actually, all the manifestations that are mentioned are all eternal. And they exist eternally. But they appear at a certain point in order to perform their pastimes or their functions. So Lord Chaitanya, his pastimes are eternal, but there's one description where in this narration, uh, Narada Muni is uh, narrating this one story and he's speaking to, I believe it is King Yudhisthira or it's, I'm not sure if it's the actual recipient of this narration, but he's saying that um, Krishna was in Vrindavan, uh, not in Vrindavan, he was in Dwarka, because Krishna in Dwarka means Krishna in the mood of Dwarka dish or opulence. And so he had 16,108 queens. And one of the principal of all queens was Rukmini. In fact, she was the Maha goddess of fortune. And Lord Chaitanya is with her. I'm sorry, not Lord Chaitanya, but Krishna is with with uh, Rukmini, and Rukmini is massaging the feet of Krishna. And by doing that, she's feeling great love, happiness, and emotional expressions of that love. And then at one point she starts to speak, glorifying Krishna, and she says, my dear Lord, you don't know how wonderful your lotus feet are. In fact, no one knows how wonderful your lotus feet are. Even you don't know how wonderful your lotus feet are. So as she's ex expressing her love in this way, Lord, uh, Lord Krishna is getting curious. Oh. I don't even know how wonderful I am. <laughs> Nobody knows how wonderful I am. But then Rukmini concludes her expressions by saying, but there is one person who knows, and that is Srimati Radharani. So when Krishna heard that, he became curious. If she's the only one who knows how wonderful I am, and even I don't know how wonderful I am, then I'm going to find out how wonderful I am by becoming her. <laughs> so I can find out what's about, what is it about Radharani that attracts me so much? That attracts me, her, me to her so much. <laughs> so then Lord Chaitanya, we also know Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Noyanya that that same uh, Krishna appears now as a manifestation of himself as Krishna, but with a mood of devotion of Radharani taking the part of a great devotee. So that was his internal mood. So the three internal reasons for the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And I'm, I'll, uh, I'll uh, recite those three, those three reasons because I guess many of us know these are called the confidential reasons. <laughs> 
why the Lord appears. One is to understand the position of Radharani and her transcendental love for Krishna. What is the nature of that love? What is the sweetness and the happiness she experiences in that love? And what is about what is it about Krishna that attracts Radharani in that way? So in order to understand himself, he becomes his devotee. And that is the pure devotee or the internal prin principle of ultimate devotion, Srimati Radharani. So he's tasting what she is experiencing in her love for him as the emotion, the attraction, and the happiness. And so this is uh, the internal reasons. Now, there are three external reasons why the Lord appeared. We all know one of them, and that was the call of Advaita Charya. When Advaita Charya was living in Sri Navadvip Dham, he was there prior to the appearance of many of the devotees who, who later became associates of Lord Chaitanya. And uh, Advaita Charya is also an incarnation of the Supreme Lord. He's a combination of Mahavishnu and Sadashiva. And in his mood of Sadashiva, Shiva's mood is one of great compassion for the fallen living entities. Advaita Charya was witnessing how people in general, we're not interested in devotion to Krishna. Although they were spiritually minded to some degree, their spirituality was done in order to gain better material position, to gain wealth, to gain followers, to gain some kind of prestige, to gain something material by performing devotional service. We find that even today, people practice Krishna consciousness or any spiritual movement in order to get to better their uh, material situation. And this is, uh, this is not devotion. This is using the mercy of God in order to improve one's material position. But Sometimes the Lord grants that, and many times he doesn't. And of course, that's not really a benefit because material life is so uncertain that even if one gains something that they desire in material life, there is no guarantee that that gain will bring them the happiness they're looking for. It may also even cause them, and it often does, more misery. So generally, this is the feature of Kali Yuga. People look for spiritual, go look towards spirituality to improve material happiness in one form or another. And so Dvaita Charya, he was seeing that this was the nature of the population in Sri Navadvipa. People were worshiping demigods gods, they were creating images of demigods, and they would worship those images to get some kind of material benefit. And after the worship was over, they would take the image of the demigods and throw it into the river. The people were somewhat well to do materially at that time, so they would use their money in various unusual ways, as is described. People were even spending large amounts of money on weddings to get their children marriage. And sometimes they even would uh, arrange for marriages between animals. 
cats and dogs. It's described in Chaitanya Bhagavad. So at that time, and there was a lot of knowledge, but it was very, say, we can say very high developed material knowledge, but not spiritual. And there was only a few devotees at the time. So Advaita Acharya was the leader of the Vaishnavas at that time. He was the leader of the Brahmanas. He was living in Shantipur, but he also had a place in Navadvip. So seeing the people in the Navadri period, he was becoming very unhappy. So he decided, he decided, well, actually their lives are wasted. I said, simply take out my chakra and finish them all off. But then he thought, well, that is not the way. Let me call for the Lord to come. So he used to go down to the banks of the Ganga and then he would create an altar and make a beautiful Shiva Linga. And then he would take Ganges water and sandalwood paste along with Tulsi leaves. And he would offer prayers to Mother Ganga and to the Shiva Linga. And then he would throw the offerings into the Ganga like that as an offering to Mother Ganga. So this went on for quite a long time. And he was calling very loudly for the Lord to appear because we have to understand that Advaita Charya in his mood as Lord Shiva has great feelings of compassion for the living entities. And he was thinking, boy, they're wasting their lives. It's my duty to try to help them understand where they can find real happiness and eternal life. So this was the second reason, or we might say the first of the internal, external reasons is that the call of Advaita Charya. The second, and the one we are most familiar is that the Lord appeared in order to inaugurate the Yuga Dharma, which is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So that Lord, the Lord wanted to bring about a transformation of consciousness to the people in general through this chanting of the holy names. And the third, as he promises in the Bhagavad Gita from the fourth chapter, verses seven and eight, whenever there's a rise of irreligion, and a decline of religious principles. At that time, I descend myself in order to reestablish the religious principles and to remove irreligion in the world. And many times that comes by killing the demons. So, of course, in this, in this particular incarnation, Lord Chaitanya doesn't come with his Shudarshan chakra to kill the demons, but he comes with the weapon of his beauty, his beauty is his weapon, his associates are his weapons, and chanting of the holy name is the means by which he uses these things to deliver people in this age of Kali. Mm -hmm. So this was the third reason, and out of these six, the three internal reason and the three external reason, it mentions in the Chaitanya Charity Tamrita that the Lord actually came for the internal reasons. It just so happened that the time to inaugurate the Yuga Dharma coincided with the Lord's desire to experience Radharani's bhakti. And therefore it says that the internal reasons were the prominent reasons why the Lord appears. Well, these are the six reasons. These are these reasons are found in the notes of Sarupa Damodar Goswami as confirmed by Srila Rupa Goswami and, and mentioned and as we mentioned in Chaitanya Mangala. To enter into Krishna Lila in this age, one cannot do it directly. One has to go through the mercy of Lord Chaitanya 
Therefore, one has to perform the activities as given by Lord Chaitanya, especially chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This word Sankirtan, San means together, and Kirtan means to glorify the Lord. But the San also means, has another meaning, it means complete. So the, another definition of Sankirtan is there is no more complete way to glorify the Lord than to chant his holy names, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So Lord Chaitanya was simply bringing about an eternal religious system and not inventing something new. But he came not only to teach it, but to practice it himself. Uh, Prabhupada says that when the student takes the part of the teacher and teaches the student from that perspective, that is the best teaching. Because there's nobody better that knows the mind of the teacher than the teacher himself. So in the mood of a student, he's teaching. Mm -hmm. Lord Chaitanya doesn't appear in every Kali Yuga. He appears in one, he appears once every hmm, 1,000 Yuga cycles. That means every 4 million 300, of every 4, 4 million 320 thousand years that the Lord appears. So you take the yuga cycle, which is such yuga, treat the yuga, Vipara yuga, Kali yuga, you add that up, it, get, it comes to four, let me see, comes to about, yeah, it comes to about four, four Hmm. comes to about four, yeah, four million, 320,000 years times 1,000. It's actually 4 billion, 320 million years where Lord Chaitanya appears. And in other Kali Yugas, the Lord comes not as... Lord Chaitanya, but he comes as Gaur Narayan. And he's not Krishna Vrindavan, he is Vaikuntha Krishna, who teaches at that time how to reach the Vaikuntha realm where the worship of the Lord is done in awe and reverence and opulence. Only when Lord Chaitanya comes, and of course he, he follows in the footsteps of Lord Krishna, who appears just before him at the end of the Dwarpa Yuga, only then can one actually understand Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan and have the opportunity to achieve Sri Vrindavan Dham. Vrindavan Dham is not so easily available and it's not always available at all times. It's only available when Lord Chaitanya comes. <laughs> you can see how rare it is that one can achieve such exalted position as Sri Vrindavan Dham. Mm -hmm. Lord Chaitanya's love for the living entities is Radharani's love for Krishna. So how does that under, be understood? What it means is that Lord Chaitanya is giving Radharani's love for Krishna to the world in the form of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So there's nothing else we need to really seek out but to worship Lord Chaitanya by performing kirtan. Goloka Prema Dana Harinam Sankirtan. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj says, only those who regularly perform the practice of Harinam Sankirtan, only those will actually achieve success in life. Well, kirtan is so important. It is the expression of the heart's devotion for the Lord. 
It's the highest form of worship in this age of Kali, and it's joyfully performed. Susukam kartamavyayam. In other words, there's no greater form of happiness that one can achieve in the process of bhakti than chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra in the association with other devotees in the mood of glorification of the Lord. So wherever Lord Chaitanya is, there's where we worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the form of Kirtan. And Kirtan is very attractive, not only to the devotees, even to the non-devotees. They find themselves drawn into the Kirtan when the Kirtan is done very nicely. They also find themselves wanting to participate or at least take part to some degree. So uh, we are blessed by the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. And he is appearing again on the 28th of this month, within another five days, in order for us to reawaken or revitalize our energies in Kirtan, despite the limited opportunity for association, one should take that and one should do whatever they can to come together with other devotees on that day, chant, dance, and uh, find happiness in the association of devotees in the mood of kirtan. Kirtan is our, is our life and our life centers around kirtan. Okay, so Lord Chaitanya's special mercy will give to the world Sri Harinam San Kirtan. And of course, in the later part of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes when he was with us towards the end, um, he went in more deeper into the mood of Radharani's love for, him, for himself, Krishna. And those pastimes were more... Um, intimate, deeper, and in the mood of his own uh, bhakti. And at that time he wrote, the only time he wrote was when he wrote the Shikshastakam prayers. And those eight prayers, which are the last chapter in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, is also the, the last part of the Lord's Leela on earth. And those eight prayers are non-different than the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, as explained by Bhakti Vinod Thakur and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj. So in those eight prayers, the entire teachings of pure devotional service is found, and that's unraveled in the form of Lord Chaitanya's associates, the six Goswamis, who wrote all of their books based on that, on these eight prayers. And these prayers are so deep. One should every day recite the Shikshastakam prayers, especially before we begin our japa for the day. And it'll give a spiritual boost to our consciousness, and we can also enter more sincerely into the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So these Shikshastakam prayers our uh, Lord Chaitanya's only writings, but in that everything is complete and perfect. Okay, so I'll stop there and see if we have any comments or questions. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Marat. Um, we're very grateful for your presence on this platform. Um, we request devotees uh, to raise their hand if they have any question and uh, or put in the chat box. Um, meanwhile, Maharaj, I have a question. The, the, yes, in the test of the yeah in the test today the um in the in the in the the first line of the purport, Shilapal uh, said, 
there is no endurance of the changing body. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, which verse is uh, that? I would like to expand on that. What, is, what, what verse is that? Same verse we're reading, Marat, there's two sixteen. Okay. The, the, uh, the very first line, and maybe I'll, I'll share the screen and... Um, there is no endurance of the changing body. I'm looking at it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Marat. Um, could you please kindly explain a little bit on that statement? So... Um, there's a, you have a question based on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, can you elaborate a little bit on the um, not endurance of the changing body? Mm -hmm. yeah, the body's always changing and at one point it's gonna disappear. <laughs> The body's always changing and one time it'll be gone. Endurance means something that lasts. The material body doesn't last. Okay, we have a question from Agni. Agni, please could you unmute yourself and ask a question. Hare Krishna, Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shiva Prabhupada, all glories to you. Uh, I wanted to ask, you mentioned the reasons why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. Um, so uh, for me, it's not very clear that thing. Um, then you mentioned that uh, uh, he appeared to explain experience uh, Radharani's feelings. So um, I'm not able to understand if the Lord uh, uh, has a feature of knowing everything, how he cannot understand um, her feelings without coming here uh, yeah. and up here. You know, if you could explain me, uh, would be... <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a mystery. <laughs> He, he now he's he ha, in order for him to do that he had to take her position. He can yeah. he can under, he can understand her feelings only when he was in her position, but as his when he's in his position as Krishna, he can he wants to understand it from experience. So that experience means that he changes his position. And becomes and develops her mood. So. He knows everything, but the experience comes when he takes her her particular position. Thank you very much. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, it's more clear, yeah. Yeah. He knows everything, but he can only experience it when he comes to her position. Okay, Marad, we have the next question from Saadeh Prabhu. Saadeh Prabhu, Prabhu, please could you raise up your hand? Or, or, or mute yourself and um, ask a question. Uh, Krishna Maharaj. Sahadev, you're driving somewhere. Thank you. Yes, I'm driving. I pulled over. I pulled over to ask my question. Uh, thank you very much, Maharaj, for coming to bless us and speaking to us and ushering in the transcendental appearance of Lord Chaitanya. My question is similar to uh, Mother Agni's question, and that is uh, the three internal reasons why uh, Lord Chaitanya appeared. Mm -hmm. 
Since the past times of the Lord is always eternal, that means that Lord Chaitanya could have experienced this uh, feeling Srimati Radharani has for him in any other world, that he chose to come into this world to perform the pastime to taste the love uh, Srimati Radharani has for him. So to me, as an ordinary being and living in this material world, it seems to me that the external reasons are more beneficial to me than the internal. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you can throw more light on that. Maharaj. That's correct. Yeah, the internal external reasons were just duty. And okay. the internal reasons were for his own transcendental pleasure. Okay. That's why it says that the internal reasons were more prominent in his appearance. The external reasons just happened to coincide with his desire to appear in this world. Hmm. This happens, it just ha as it says that in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, yeah, that the call of Advaita Charya and the institution of the uh, inauguration of the Yuga Dharma chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra just happened to be at the same time when the Lord wanted to appear and to experience the internal reasons. So he accomplished both in one appearance. Yeah. Well, thank you, Maharaj. I... Yeah, okay. you know, we, we all have our office and then we have our pleasure. You know, we go to the office to work and we, we go to the beach for pleasure. So we go to the office because we have to do that. And we go to the beach because we look forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. so, so Krishna, he's a, he has the same nature. He'll come to, you know, show compassion for the living entities, but his pleasure potency is the prominent nature, his prominent nature. So he experienced that as foremost. That becomes the foremost thing. Well, thank you very much, Maharaj. If I may ask a, a, a second question, you you were like encouraging us to chant the Sikshastaka, usually like before we chant uh, Japa. Yeah. And I am I am quite concerned about uh, praying and reciting the Sikshastaka, especially the eighth verse. Because at my stage, I even though Krishna can handle me whichever way he wants, but I do not want to consciously tell him that because if he handles me roughly, I might not be able to cope. Yeah, you, so um, that one's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> Verse number seven and verse number eight is exclusively Radharani's love for Krishna. Okay, thank you so much. Even number seven may not be for you either. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it's not for most of us. Uh, thank you. But thank Lord Chaitanya has given us the complete process in those eight prayers, so he takes it all the way up to the highest. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't, doesn't mean, you know, you know, you, you might read about something that is way far beyond your ability to perform, but you might read about it just to learn about it, but you won't be able to do it. So, but you can appreciate it. But maybe one day you'll get there. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj, for blessing me. <laughs> that does a very beautiful thing. I'm not there either. <laughs> Maharaj, we have a next question from Judge Amega. 
Yeah, Jamaica, mute yourself and ask the question. Yeah, I think I'm done the work for now. Colin. I mean, can you hear me? Are you Krishna? Yeah, you can go ahead. We can hear you. Okay, okay. Well, in the course of your lecture, you may mention that uh, the Lord came with uh, three weapons. You may mention the chanting of the holy name, association, and beauty. Whereas in other ages, you know, the Lord came with other material weapons like the Sudachan Chakra, Lord Ramachandra with the bows and arrows. But my question is, in the age of Kali, why all kinds of the bad tendencies to the extent that even the four legs of religion is broken. So why mm -hmm. does the Lord choose to come with the chanting of the Holy Name rather than uh, the quality that we have in this age? I'm thinking that he has to come with some kind of weapons to slack us, but he comes with the chanting, the association, and the beauty. So I would like to, I would like you to explain, shed a bit on this for me as to why uh, it doesn't come with those material yeah, weapons, yeah, but yeah. rather than, uh huh. Yeah, because if, because if he came, oh, if he didn't come clear. in that merciful. Yeah, yeah, because if he didn't come in that merciful okay. incarnation, in because he comes in that merciful incarnation, people have a chance. But if he were to come as Krishna or to Lord Ramachandra with bows and arrows, or Krishna with his shooter chakra, then he would kill everybody. <laughs> there would be nobody left. So uh, in this age, people can are not very inclined to spiritual life. Manda sumanda matayo manda bhagyapadita. People are lazy, un misguided, unlucky, always disturbed. They can't practice spiritual life. So in previous ages, people came. People were more qualified, and therefore the process was different. But now in this age. Uh, uh, just like the more ignorant people are, the more the less you have, to, the less you can teach them in order for them to grow. Just like if you read certain scriptures, there are very basic principles of devotion to God, which are so simple that anybody can learn them. But when Krishna spoke to Arjuna on the battlefield. Uh, he spoke very high knowledge where not everyone could understand because Arjuna was able to understand. So according to the nature of the people of the age, the Lord comes in a certain way. So in Kali Yuga, people are very, very materially attached, materially degraded, materially uh, lost. So therefore he made it easy because Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita <coughs> surrender unto me. But then again, after he said that, he was thinking, well, not too many people are actually surrendering. I made it too hard. So when he came as Lord Chaitanya, he made it easier. So chant, dance, take prasadam, read some books, and associate with some nice people, and you become God conscious. It's easy for okay. Krishna, Maharaj. people in this. Okay, area. thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Um, okay, thank you, <laughs> Maharaj. Um, in response to your last, thank you. In the answer you just gave, Maharaj. But the time my proposed movement is eat, dance, and chant the holy name. Yeah. Uh, it is said that in Kali Yuga, people have no qualification. Uh, in, in Krishna Lila, Krishna requires that we should surrender unto him. Then he will, take, uh, will protect us from all mm -hmm. difficulties, simple reactions. But in, in this age, it is said that Vashita Mahaprabhu did not require for any condition. But we, st we still practically have to follow so many rules and regulations to be able to actually get the mercy of the Lord. 
Um, how do we balance that, my right? Because we have to follow the four regulatory principles. We have to live in a particular way. We have to live in a particular association. And all of these are conditions that requires for us to be able to taste, to be able to get the mercy of the Lord. Yeah, you can look at it two ways. If you just, if you go and start chanting and dancing and you do it for regular, regularly, you get a higher taste, then it becomes easy to follow the rules and regulations. When Krishna was here, he made the rules and regulations first in order to practice devotion. But Lord Chaitanya said, you know, just chant and dance. And after some time, you'll start easily and naturally following the rules and regulations. He doesn't, he makes the, he doesn't make the requirements first. He gives you the taste first and then he, then he do, introduces the requirements. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Is that okay? It's okay, Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah. Don't worry about rules and regulations at the beginning. Just chant, dance, and after sometimes you want to follow the rules and regulations. It becomes easy, becomes natural. But in the beginning, it's difficult. And rules and regulations means getting off the bodily platform. So that's what the that's what the rule the word R and R rule and regulation means to put you on the spiritual platform, get you off the material platform. Mm -hmm. But the chanting can automatically do that directly. So if you just do kirtan all the time, <laughs> that's the only rule. <laughs> but sometimes, my right, we do also don't have the taste for the holy name. Then how do you resolve that? Because in, in the Sishasta camp, the prayers number two, don't even do a lot of time. My purpose is giving this free um, entrance, just develop the taste by just chanting. But sometimes also we see that um, the taste, for, we're not reluctant, very reluctant to chant. And even when we want to chant, sometimes it becomes very difficult because of the moods. Prabhupada gives the example of a person who has jaundice, which is a disease of the liver, and they can't taste anything sweet to be sweet. Anything sweet tastes bitter when you have jaundice. But the cure for jaundice is sugar cane, sugar cane juice, which is very sweet. But one who has jaundice, when he takes sugar cane juice, although it's the cure, will taste bitter. But if he keeps tasting it because it's the cure, it'll cure the, the bitter taste and the jaundice, and then after a while, it'll taste sweet. So just keep doing it. <laughs> it'll, it'll get sweeter and sweeter. <laughs> Thank you very much, Marat, for the answer. Um, I do not see any hands up here again. It's been one hour, 21 minutes. We've been on here. We thank you very much, Marat, for your time. For okay. the wonderful association. Constantly always bless us with your presence. We're very grateful um, for this wonderful association you're giving to us. And we pray that um, you come again when we call uh, for your presence on the platform. So thank uh, you, so, thank you, Salika Das. Thank you very much, Marai. Mm -hmm. So I request I, all of the devotees to unmute themselves. Let us chant a powerful one, Hare mm -hmm. Krishna Maha Mantra, to appreciate Marai for coming to this platform and giving us this association. Hare Krishna 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 Hare Kr